Hi there, it's Tom the English Picker here. I just wanted to do this little video actually. It's kind of a rant video. Uh, you know I love doing my rant videos. I could honestly rant quite for quite a while. But this video is kind of spurred on by this particular game here, <clears throat> which um, in my last video I showed. It's um, Xbox 360 Connect Adventures and I purchased this from the British Heart Foundation. Now, I have many issues with many different charity shops, as I've talked about in the past. I've ranted about Oxfam and their high prices on clothes, where they price Primark cheap clothes higher than their actual original retail price. But this video really is going to talk about the difference between value and perceived value. I encountered a problem when buying this particular DVD from a uh, game from um, British Heart Foundation, and this has happened before. Basically, um, it was it was it was two ninety nine, so it was three quid, and I took it to the counter with another DVD that was also it was a DVD that was sealed, and that was one ninety nine, so it came to a fiver in total. And when I got there, the lady behind the counter, I w well, first and foremost, I was waiting behi behind two people. And the first person, the guy who had done all the purchase and everything like that, he was getting ready to go, he was getting a receipt, and then the woman went, oh, do you want a raffle ticket? And this guy had just spent 20-odd 20, 20 pounds, and he was kind of strong-armed into paying a pound for a raffle ticket. And she said this with another person behind him, there was me, and then two people behind me. And this lady was sort of in her mid-40s, something like that. Um, not that that really matters, but, you know, she wasn't particularly old, she wasn't young, so in that sort of middle ground. And he proceeded to then have to painstakingly write his address out, give it to her, then give her the pound, it went through the tail again and all that. And then he left. And then she then proceeded, even with this queue, another person had joined the back, she proceeded to painstakingly copy his address into this other book, then clear the table of other bits that she got, put them in the back, then come out, and then serve the woman in front of me. And then she served the woman in front of me, and did exactly the same thing again, that she'd been obviously been trained to do by the British Heart Foundation staff, is ask about a raffle ticket. Now also, upon leaving this said British Heart Foundation, there was a guy on the door who'd seen that the person in front of me and the person that had bought a raffle ticket or paid for something, and then proceeded to ask that person if they wanted to buy a raffle ticket. Now to me, that just pisses people off, or somehow guilt trips them into paying another pound. I think charity shops have really got to focus on the customer experience and how they cater to their customers and getting away from this guilt tripping aspect of it which really puts a lot of people off and people just won't go back. I know a lot of people who won't go into a British Art Foundation now because of this raffle ticket fiasco. Anyway, the main part of the video really was then the lady in front of me paid, she left, and I got to the till. And I put these two DVDs down on the till. And she picked it up, looked at the code, typed it into her till thing, then got a pair of scissors out, and went to start open this factory sealed game. And I, luckily I was paying attention, because at that point I was a bit pissed off anyway. And I was like, whoa, 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 what, what are you doing? She's like, oh, we have to open them and check the CDs in there. And she kept shaking it and was like, I can't hear there's a CD in there. I was like, but it's it's factory sealed. No one would go to this effort of, of factory sealing an item and there'd be no CD in. She was, And then she got dead shirty with me, like... Oh, I, 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 I can't sell it to you. Unless I open it, I can't sell it to you. There could be no CD in there. And then you come back and 
And, the, and I was like, are you seriously going to open this? And I, I just had to say, I said, if you open it, I don't want to buy it. I said, and I said, I said, you know, I want to buy it to give to someone, which was a bit of a white lie, but I don't really want to say I'm a reseller and I'm going to get three times the price if it's new and sealed. And and she made a right big deal of it. And to be fair, she's actually cut a bit of it. But then she went, oh, I'll have to go and ask my manager. So I was already waiting at this point long enough. I got three or four people breathing down the back of my neck. I could feel their eyes of hatred burning a hole in the back of my head. And she went to go and get the manager, and the manager was on the phone, and it was like, oh my god. And then the stupid manager eventually got off the phone and then said, oh, well, we'll make an exception this time. So I don't think how many people have bought DVDs at this silly British Art Foundation, and they cut the seal open just to check the discs in there, even though it's sealed. It's so stupid. But the... The problem is, I don't wish to offend anybody in this video, and I understand that the volunteers in charity shops do a really good job. And But I also understand that a lot of the managers get paid. So, I think staff training is important because a lot of the people who volunteer in charity shops either struggle with other work or they're maybe slightly socially awkward or I'm trying to I mean you kind of know what I mean you know your average charity shop worker is a you know like a lovely old dear or someone who's not really had a job before and they're trying to get experience and stuff like that and the problem also lies with pricing with charity shops we all want to find one of those charity shops that the pricing is like 10p and 20p buy some old deer but the same problem lies that if they're going to price something like this at say 50p in their mind they don't value it and thus they don't treat it with any kind of respect or whatnot so I've had it where I bought books for 50p and as they've been handling it for the, the till they've ripped the dust jacket which just ruins the value but they they don't care because they've already priced it at 50p, so to them it's not worth much. But this could be a 10, 20 pound book. And that's the real conundrum. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it where stuff's priced cheaply, but yet people treat the stuff with care or with some kind of respect for it being expensive. But yet, but yet you do on the flip side where I went into a charity shop today and they got a set of um, sugar tongs that were marked Tibetan silver. And that was a ruse by, in the early 1900s, of, um, of cutlery manufacturers to uh, sell their products. They'd put, like, Tibetan silver or all, whatever silver. And all that meant was that the silver that was used to silver plate it, that's where it was potentially from. But they did that to try and get people into buying it thinking it was solid silver and that's the trap that this charity shop had fallen into they were saying it was solid silver which them selling that as that was is actually against the law it's against the 1977 hallmarking act i didn't point it out to them because i just thought what the hell and they wanted 24.99 for these sugar tongs and they were just plain now if they were solid silver Twenty four ninety nine is actually still quite expensive, and these sugar tongs just are not going to sell. And if they do sell, you know, fair play. But I think it's really bad. Uh, I think if if charity shops can sit in that middle ground, then that's that's great. Another case, I went to a charity shop. All their CDs were priced at three pounds ninety nine for battered, knackered. CDs and I was just like what what is going on I don't understand there's so many times where things like that happens and it really rubs me the wrong way I mean in the comments section below just put if you had any uh, annoying experiences like that any kind of circumstances where something goes wrong so that's my bit of a rant I think really places like 
the other thing as well about the British Heart Foundation is they try and cram so much stuff in there. Most of them, wherever I've gone around the country, there's there's a common denominator. Now I don't know if it's a policy that's given to the the stores, but they they have the rows either side of stuff, and then in the middle they have aisles uh, like of clothes. And the problem with that is that while people are browsing, new people are trying to come into the shop and having to squeeze by the other people. And then some people just stand there and don't let you through. So then you think, oh, sod this, I can't be bothered. And the amount of people I've seen when I've been in a British Art Foundation that have walked in, couldn't get through, and walked straight out. And that's lost business for them. No matter how much extra space it means they have, that psychological difference of this is a bit cramped. Also, especially if you've got bags like me, I go around and buy a lot of stuff. So I've got big bags of stuff. And if I can't fit through, I'm not going to look. I'm just going to go somewhere else. It's just, And they have a lot of new items, new jewellery items. Get rid of that stuff. doesn't need to be there. And you don't need the bits in the middle. I went to one decent one. And that was... Where was that? I think it was Link. It was Lincoln. There was there was a British Heart Foundation there, and it was really good. Um, and you went in, and there was no bits in the middle, and it was just a dream. It was really nice to walk round. You felt comfortable. Also, another point, actually, just to rant a bit more, is I recently have discovered how aggressive grannies can be. Now that in itself sounds a little bit wrong, but what I mean by that is I'll be looking at books and then I'll just feel this presence here and I'm looking at the books and whatnot and then I'm gradually getting nudged further along the bookshelf and honestly some of the old dears that are out there don't take no prisoners if you're spending too long looking at an area they'll, they'll either tell you or they'll subtly nudge you along, or not very subtly. So, or just reach over and gr and it's like, whoa, what's going on? I don't understand. A couple of weeks back, there was a cancer research, uh, probably about thirty miles away from me. I was visiting a mate, and um, it was shutting down for remodelling, and they had a, a sale on where every bit of clothing was a pound. Was it a pound? I think it was a pound each. Yeah, crazy. And I went to town with ties. I bought like 30 odd ties for like 50p each. And books were three for a pound. So I was like, I'm getting in there. And it was packed. And there was actual fights between old dears in there over clothes. Pulling the clothes. And oh, it was. I wish, I wish I had a camera on me to take a video. Because it was really, really aggressive. It was just grab what you can and kind of hold it and guard it in your... Oh, it was weird. The psychology of it was fascinating. It, it would have been funny to be a fly on the wall in that event. But, yeah, that's just my bit of a rant about about charity shops. I can I could talk literally for hours about it. And if any charity shops are watching, get in touch because I have lots of ideas about how you can improve your business model. There's plenty of ways in which... The psychology of people shopping can affect your business and it's just something that I notice on a daily basis and a lot of especially the big charity shops are really dropping the ball so thanks for watching everybody if you want to hear any other about rants about anything or if you have any top topics or subjects you want me to talk about just pop it in the doobly-doo and um, yeah I'll get back to you Thanks for watching. Bye.